Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the regular Sunday game here at uh, Rector's channel. Uh, I am your GM. Uh, lessons learned. And uh, let's go around the table and introduce all the lovely people that are here. Uh, let's start with Robert. Robert, can you introduce your character and yourself to the audience? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Rob. How you doing? Uh, that came out really like New Yorkish. Uh, I'm playing. Uh, <laughs> how you doing? Uh, no, I'm playing Lael the uh, the monk, and uh, I I kind of don't know what to do this session because I kind of just here. Got to find a hook. We got. I got to work. I'm trying to find a hook. Kept getting keep getting rejected for it though, unfortunately. But <laughs> we'll work on that. Uh, next up, we have Petherin. That's that's me playing uh, Barakat, the eloquence tiefling bard, still mm -hmm. technically a human. Um, recently, a multitude of events occurring to him at once, mm -hmm. or at least in a short amount of time. Uh, very conflicted in general. Yep, that's where he is. Next up, we have Justin. I am Justin. Uh, I am the GM over at One Bad Roll, and today I will be playing Marcus Ollivander Klein. Let's see if I said his name correctly. Klein Ollivander. I will get it. Uh, I am a nobleman who has been away from home for about five years, just wants to see his family safe, and today he's going to legally come back from the dead. Next up, we have Griffin. Hey, everybody, I'm Griffin. I'm playing Baron Kicks the Shield. He has an important meeting today. We get to tell everyone that the cult is actually smuggling money into the country. It's not going to be great. <laughs> okay, and last but not least, we have Ractus, or Theta. Yep, our total necromancer. I also distinctly bring people back legally from the dead. <laughs> Two different forms of necromancy. Mine, mine, mine is just paperwork. Yeah, yours bureaucratic uh, necromancy. Mine is more complicated than that. <laughs> A little bit, you know. Fill out two forms <laughs> here in the other oh. world. <laughs> uh, we left it off with uh, um, our total wizard arriving at Diamond Lake. And uh, for what purpose? We're about to find out. So let's scoot over to the map of Diamond Lake, the general map anyway, and uh, see what's going on. Oh. So you're somewhere on this main road over here. I'm putting myself in the objects and tokens, so I'll keep messing uh, up. I'm map. just, I just enjoy the, the map maker's mark or wherever the hell the thing comes from, the bottom right. Well, this is from the Age of Worms. Uh, no, I gathered that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and see, one of the houses, one of the larger houses is uh, where you're going. So you're going to meet, who are you going to try to meet? Uh, hold on, I got to bring my notes back up. Uh, Paleon Shadow Spear, uh, I'm going to say Shadow Spear, Shadow Whisper, and his half-brother, whichever one is here. Okay, both of them are here. Um. Well, they have different houses, but they are here. Uh, Pelion have been, have been uh, married, so it's his uh, brother-in-law. Yeah. Because uh, so. I met his wife last time when she entered the door when I went to their house. Or so one of their be, houses. Yeah. Uh, this would be Pelion. Avdro Rao um, character. And his brother-in-law. The High Elf, uh, Marek Silverleaf. So you go to Palian, and um, his wife is there, and he says, by all means, come in. Um, and uh, my husband should be here shortly. I will send word. Uh, if I may be so bold, may I inquire as to your um, need for my husband? Well, I mean, preferably both of them, 
but uh, yeah, I just needed a little bit of help, and I was hoping that they could help me again. Mm. Very well. Uh, Paling comes first, and a few minutes later, uh, Merrick. Oh, my total friend here. Oh, how can I help you? Been a while. Yeah, yeah. Again, thank you once again for your help with the cultists last time. Surely I probably would not have found my way without your leads. And again, I guess, with your martial support as well, as you did show up there at the end. We do what we can. Though, it's been a while since... Hmm. I guess I'm a bit rusty. No, I don't so, recall any complaints. Hmm. So... And he basically takes you to the to small study that he has with his... And his half-brother, Merrick, is just silent, observing everything. Um, what can we do for, friend? Well, much as before, I've come to Greyhawk investigating rumors of a... Well, last time it was a, a cult. This time it's a, an object. Uh, it seems to bring about the... I'm sorry, I'm at a loss for words here. Mystical end to whoever, whoever bears it. That seems to be a kind of object one would try to stay away from. Right, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's much like a wish, right? There's always an up and a down. Hmm. And you see Merrick, uh, sort of, you know, he steeples his fingers, he sort of leans back. It's like, he's just, he's intently uh, serving Saying nothing. Hmm. Well, did your investigation lead you here to Diamond Lake, perhaps? Uh, uh, not to Diamond Lake, uh, Greyhawk, uh, as a matter of chance. Uh, typically, my leads have been leading me around to a number of gambling houses throughout the city. Oh, well, there's a lot of those. Right, well, I mean, you, you imagine the type of person that would be after an object that has both a boon and a a Bane scenario going about it. Somebody who likes to play with Lady Luck. And Marek speaks up with like, so you're looking for either magical dice or cards of some sort? It's a deck, yeah. Cards. And when you say a deck, both of them sort of open as like, uh, friends. <laughs> My experience with magical cards has been Status brought with danger. I once was, uh, we did take an expedition to the castle, Castle Greyhawk, and found a similar deck there. We barely came out with our lives. We had to leave it behind, of course, and I would not suggest you go down there if it's still there at all. But as I said, my leads would lead me to believe that it's somewhere within Greyhawk right now. The city of Greyhawk, that is. Yes, this is. Well, you did uh, help us uh, uh, confirm that we were able to deal with that extinction of that uh, cult. I guess we do owe you. No, I don't. Uh, I don't consider this. An, I mean, Gar is probably like backing away from that word, like you owe it. We owe you. And he's like, oh no. I I consider you both my friends. I don't know what you think of me, but for our shared adventure before, I consider you friends of mine, which is not something I consider most. So, trust me, I, well, I'm not going to ask anybody to trust me. I'm just going to say that I don't expect anything owed. You helped me, I helped you. We are squaresies. <laughs> uh, Max says, well, what if you are looking for the deck that I believe you're looking for? It can grant you great boons. Of that is, there's no doubt. But it can also lead you to your end. Uh, Which is the easiest yeah. way to find it, as it turns out. There are some very, pause, spectacular ways to die, apparently, when it comes to this deck, which makes it quite easy to track. Yes. 
they kind of look at each other. It's like, forgive me. And if it is too intrusive, then you, of course, are free not to answer. But is this uh, for uh, personal use? We would hate to give something or try to find something like this and, well, have some third party get his hands on it. Uh, I take a quick gander around the room. Who else is here? Is it just us two or? Just her, the two of them. Her wife? Her wife is not. Her wife already left? You know, I never yeah. asked. Do they have kids? Uh, None that you have seen. Right, and I don't remember. Remember last time, but I came like midnight last yeah. time. Which yeah. Hopefully their yeah. kids would be asleep. But again, half drow, who knows? Half elves, I don't know the sleep patterns of half elves are. Yeah. Oh, not at all. Trance. <laughs> Gar, I'm too smart for this shit. Ah, uh, yes, no, uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's personal. Well, and, and Pele looks at Merrick, it's like, if you don't understand the risks that you're incurring, and no third parties will be involved, then I guess it's better to have it in your hands than some other person that might, you know, commit an error and, well, pay the ultimate price because of it. And Marek speaks up, it's like, well, there is, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, the ultimate price is that there is at least one card that hurt. That if it kills you, and there are many ways to kill in that deck, there is no coming back. Even with the other abilities of the cult. Yes, it no, I am, I am... It is that powerful. I'm aware of what you speak. So you have done your research. Very well. Um, Merrick, could, uh, go, you could go to the, uh, to the guild and see what they know. They tend to keep track of these things. Do avoid our mutual friend, though. Because we want to attract his attention. He, he nods. And I would go with you back to the city. I do have some connections with certain people. Do um, you have anything more information to offer? Well, perhaps it would help me a great deal. Out of character, I need to... I can't remember the name of the uh, the, the last establishment. Hmm. Not the one that I yeah. was at, but the one I was Yeah, the, go the Golden Wheel. But you also heard about the story about Martin Fire. Which was, you know, that's kind of the, the guy who was drunk told you about the story about the Martin Fire and how he died spectacularly uh, in a gambling, uh, one of these gambling places. And sort of that's a legend that spreads around the gamblers. Right, right. But uh, I mean, that was so, the story that was going to lead me to the Golden Wheel, right? Yeah. Not the yeah. place that I was at, but the, the one that the mayor of Greyhawk owns and owns, is corrupt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so I just recount back to them what I've already been told. Well, if the device that was used in the property of the mayor, then there's another guild I can reach out to, which I still have connections to. They are uh, <laughs> a secretive bunch, but um, if anybody would be interested in such an um, artifact, at least keeping track of it, it would be them. So I will journey back to the city. Um, in fact, uh, did you bring a horse with you? I did, but I should say that my horse is quite a bit exhausted from the track we rode uh, post-haste. Yes, I will ask you if you were willing to leave it in the care of our, of our stable, stable boy. Uh, we could travel back rather quickly. Uh, isn't that Merrick? And Merrick sort of rolls his eyes and is like, Brother, you cannot be offering people just... I mean, it's not like it's a... We can travel back faster. It's like... It's like fine. Come with me. And... Uh, Basically, uh, Merrick takes you to his home. Actually, he takes you to a, like a shed behind the home. 
and he opens a trap door and beneath, beneath the trap door, it's a, it's a small kind of, you're pretty wide, so it's kind of hard for you to, they're more light. Uh, so they're, they're easy to go down this, this spiral staircase. And it's a very small room, dominated by something you actually are well aware of, but you've seen this before, which is a teleportation circle. Yeah, I figure if they have a home, they probably cast a spell every day for a year, which makes it permanent. And Greyhawk, yeah. being the most major city in the setting, probably yeah. has its own teleportation circle. Yeah, so Merrick is like, well, Merrick? I was like, step into circle. You, you and Paleo step into circle. He, uh, he, he basically takes out a wheel that he has, and he starts rotating the wheel. And ordering and saying, "You do you know Elvin? That's a language." Uh, hold on, I don't think so. Uh, do, 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 no. So he starts basically. It's like a stone wheel with like three concentric wheels in it, and he starts rotating them. And as he does, and saying some words, you see that symbols alongside the the outer edge of the circle start lighting up. Uh, not all of them do. And then he sort of concentrates and stands his hand, and you disappear, and you appear in another place, um, another empty room. And when you come out, it is also like a, a shed, right? Uh, actually, when he comes out, he has to, he basically, to open the door, he goes and sort of gets a secret panel and moves it and kind of jiggles something there, and that opens the door, and he closes back again, and they come out, and you come out like in a, like a small manor in a shed in the back of a small manor. And one of the gardeners who was, you know, cleaning up, they look, looks up and like, ah, oh, that's a pillion. Uh, he's like, he was. And then he looks at you, he's like, he looks at you, looks at Palian, looks back at you, looks back at Palian, goes like, uh, uh, I'll bow. Yeah, and he she bows, right? but he's like he's never seen the likes of you before. So he's like, like oh, my friends. And in, and the moment that Palian steps into the 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 light, he basically sort of you know has a cloak in it. Uh, but the gardener recognizes, and uh, they seem to know each other. And they just go and through the main gates and leave. Right? This doesn't seem to be like a house that he owns or anything. It just seems someone else's property. Maybe he has some connections here, and uh, he moves in. So basically, he tells you that uh, he is going to meet with some of his friends. And his friends are very secretive. And therefore, you know, it's a thing where... Yeah, where do you want me to meet you? Yeah, he tells you a, a, a locale in the, uh, near the university. And he also knows that uh, expect a message. If Merrick discovers anything... Um, uh, he will probably send send a message. We do ascending to interview. So if you you know somebody sends you ascending, to be prepared for him to uh to do that. Understood. Uh, for you. Yeah, and so basically it's going to be uh to, actually it's it's one of the, the it's the same in bar in 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 bar that uh, you had the original discussion in near the university. The <laughs> the open called the open the open book. Um. And it basically, it's a boarding house for students and uh, members of the guild, uh, you know, especially the traveling build, uh, members. So the guild is somewhere around, the, where's the pyramid? This here, right here? Beside the pyramid, so it's somewhere around here. One of the larger buildings. Um, so, it, you know, wait for it. So, we dead with that. Um... We switch to Griffin and company. Uh, so who's with you, uh, Griffin? Uh, uh, I believe our new case. friend Marcus is here. Anyone else? Uh, I don't think so. Bearcat, I think, went off to do their own thing, and Lail didn't come back with Marcus. Yeah, I did. I did. I don't, yeah, I I don't remember it. you being around, but I mean, you're technically invited if you want to come, but it is going to be the talk, so. Yeah, sure. We're, come we're, along. We're, well, okay, I guess I'll go since I'm being invited. <laughs> That's there you go. Yeah. That's how stealthy uh, is. We just didn't know he was in our shadow the whole time. Yeah. Um. So, 
uh, you are walking to the the um, from Textbook all the way over here. Uh, this is the um, the mansion, I believe. Let's see uh, where the mansion, the mayor's. Um, let me tell you just real good. I am yeah, wearing a handful of. I am wearing here. my expensive yeah. outfit. Uh, you're going to the uh, Lord Mayor, uh, and his, he still is, as of, of this date, uh, Nair of Gaskell. Uh, he is of a, um older age. Uh, he's close to uh, 72 years old at the time, in the 70s, uh, but still uh, a bit uh, under the weather as of late. He doesn't make a lot of public appearances. In fact, you, you yourself have never met him personally uh, due to, you know... Um, the fact that he has, uh, and usually with the Castilian that you met with, with Stuart. Mm -hmm. um, Would I have met the Lord Mayor in my lifetime? Probably seen him from a distance in a party or two. Yeah. But you were not introduced. Yeah. He is... Uh, the reason why, although that has changed over the years, is that a lot of the people who are rich, especially the old, old, old money and, and Greyhawk, they look down on uh, Gasco. Because he came from yeah. humble roots, right? Uh, he was able to, you know, maneuver the politics, especially the, the guild politics of the city, and become mayor at a relatively young age, in his 30s, right? Uh, so that was many decades ago, but almost well, over 30 years ago. He was a mayor even before the Greyhawk Wars. Um, oh, so he's been around. Yeah. Um, and um, And so now... Uh, he is, uh, he, you know, he's, he's, a, he's basically become such an establishment uh, <laughs> that there's a, almost an entire generation of people who have grown in Greyhawk that only has known him as the mayor, who have grown up and know him as the mayor. That, that, people are now kind of middle age, going to middle age, that have grown know him as the mayor. That has long has been the mayor of the city, which, considering how dangerous it can be to mayor Greyhawk, it's it's an achievement unto itself. But nowadays he does, you know, he does not a uh, very public figure. So you come in, and there's of course guards outside, and um, and you present your letters, uh, uh, kicks, and you're let in. You see the Castilian. Yep. I have a picture of the Castilian. Yes, we have Jacob Stewart. So they can put it for everybody to see. I love how he has the most normal name out of everybody we've met so far. He has the, he has the name of a NASCAR driver. Why is it that open? I open one these things once. I was thinking entertainer. I try to open them again and no dice. I don't. I can't see them for some reason. I'm all yeah. for it too, by the way. We need more like normal name people sometimes instead of like uh Lale or something like that. <laughs> I will name uh, my next character Bob. I mean you I understand Lale way. was your creation, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm making fun of my own naming. Don't get me wrong, but how long has uh Jacob Stewart been the been the uh Castilian? Probably over a decade. So yes, even before you um I'm I am just confirming if if uh, that information is the same because that'll approach how how the conversation goes. Um, you know, but again, you know him by reputation as someone who is a uh, pretty much a straight shooter, right? Yep. Uh, and the mayor's right hand man. Um, so you meet him in study. He's like, oh, and he bows to you. That and it's been been quite so time. Uh, what brings you to uh, a lovely city? Well, various bits of news to come and deliver, as well as uh, maybe a possible plan of action, even. I've got a little bit to describe to you, so if you'll sit down, uh, I'll go ahead and describe all that I've learned. No uh, and to go ahead and just, like, for the viewer's sake, since they know everything, I'll probably go ahead and skip ahead to the part of, well, I think that uh, I have heard from what I have found as a reliable source on my latest venture that there's a, a large amount of gold coming in from our adversaries into our territory, specifically to uh, stir things up and weaken us. You remember the uh, arena 
incident last year, don't you? That, um, I think, I can now positively attribute uh, to some of our enemies. So there's a connection with the madmen that try to drown the entire city and the orcish uh, hordes of the south. That's hmm. right. I, I do believe they're they were... working in tandem to some degree. I never thought them smart enough to wage economic warfare. But it, for what he tried to pull in the arena would require major resources. Even more so than just someone with, you know, his wealth could afford. Indeed. But he's not without going bankrupt, that is. Which is perhaps where these gold supply lines seem to be coming from. They are definitely funding this venture one way or another. To, um, I would have to go to the guilds and see if they attract any specific new gold bars. Do you have a sample, perhaps, of the kind of symbols or other things that you're looking for? Uh, I do, actually. Here, allow me to draw it. I don't believe I actually have, like, a physical object at all, do I? From our I mean, ventures. you had the gold bars, but... Oh, you know. yeah. We got but gold bars. You, but I don't know if you kept one of them and brought it with you. That's... You could have, right? If you were, that's what you're trying to... Yeah, I, I think narratively it makes sense to like at least keep one of them around and just go like, yeah, it's this. Marcus, knowing that like you had to report this back and being part of discussions of going back to Greyhawk mm -hmm. would have ensured that you brought one. Yeah, so there we go. It It makes the most sense to do this. I have to... Well, I have to call in the... Um... Have a guild members, and basically he writes a letter and one of his assistants and, and several letters and like send them to them. Would you please wait for for this? Because I believe that they would like to hear about this. Of course, uh, and There's it takes a while. Time. It takes a while. Um, uh, in that case, while we're waiting, mm -hmm. that is when I look over to kicks and I'm like, mm -hmm. "Well, if we're waiting, but I think now may be an appropriate time." Oh. Yes. Uh, my associate here is one that I recently met on my venture and has actually mm -hmm. aided us in acquiring some of this information. He has a certain thing to speak about, though, on near and dear to him, if you would hear him out momentarily. So long as we have the time. Marcus? It's going to take a while for the agents to come here, but they, they should come pretty quickly. Well, I am glad to see that the... Uh... Well-respected Jake Stewart, still the Castilian of the city. My name is Marcus Klein Ollivander. I am the son of Klein Marcel Ollivander, and I'm here to report myself legally alive. He leans back on his chair. As I understood it, there was only one Ollivander left. Well, she's no longer an Ollivander. That I have come to recently know. However, um, when, event, when events transpired, I was not there when anything happened. I was set to be making a visit to a relative, but that did not go as planned. And I was halfway across the world. At least. But I have survived. I have gotten stronger. From what I've been told, I resemble much more of my father now than I did before, being a little bit more physically capable. However, as stated, I I am back. I wish to resume the life of the living. I wish to assist the war on the front lines with the Baron, of course. But additionally, I wish to, I wish to take my place in what is rightfully mine as the son of a of, of a noble and war hero. If you are an Olivander, you probably also understand that it's not as easy as simply declaring yourself alive. Oh, 100%. You... That is why I hence reported to someone who is important. The public servant, sir. Do you have any proof to back this up? Because I'm sure you're aware there are many ways to fake these things. And he looks at kicks, you know, he sort of glasses um, him. So my I'm hand... Questioning, not questioning your personal honor, sir. It's just that 
it would be remiss if I were not to, shall we say, take all necessary steps. Um, so course. what I will do is, first of all, I will rattle off my family lineage from the beginning. And you start running like, mm, and that then, would require, and that then would require, second, he basically stops you, he's like, first and foremost, sir. Yes. You have to go to the, you will have first, first to go to the, uh. So which guild is it that you have to go to first? Um, the Guild of Lawyers and Scribes. They should have a complete heraldry of your family. Wonderful. Once you go, well, it, once you time, go to them and are be. able to do their satisfaction. I pull out a scroll of pedigree. So and I put my hand up on the table. You've with already the done it. <laughs> he comes prepared. Yep, so scroll of pedigree in the hand with the signet ring. Oh, I think this covers that. There it is. He looks at it. <laughs> you don't mind if I hold on to this and have it verified, do you? Not at all. I would actually be very curious to see what happens when it is. Take some time. And if I do say so myself, the information that the... Um, the your baron has brought to us. It's a little has priority. So well, people course. start people start filing in, and about starting about a half an hour. Or so it takes about an hour and a half for everybody to in. Uh, you might know some of the people they, or at least you know the guilds are coming <laughs> from. Yeah. Uh, 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 the guild of jewelers and gem cutters, which essentially are the bankers, if you will, of of the Greyhawk, at least part of the bankers. Uh, you would think they would be the merchants trade union, but that's not the case. Uh, members of the Merchant Trade tra Matrix and Trades Union, uh, the Mid Workers Guild, uh, the Union of Money Changes and Pawn Workers, which are the other side of the banking, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and that that would be it. Um, and and a member of the Union of Sages and ac Academics, right? So you have like six or seven people show up. Uh, Marcus might re remember a few of them, maybe, but it's been a while, and guild leadership or representatives change. You know, guilds are, tend to be very de de uh, democratic. Some retire, some could actually yeah. move up. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. so you know, holding on to your position in any one position, especially as a representative, usually is a, a stepping stone to become a, a guild master, and so those tend to change very quickly. So you may recognize maybe the son of or the nephew of someone else, perhaps like like the nation, but uh, you know, again, you were not your mother was the one that did most of the business, especially with the money lenders and all that, for the term, for terms of in acquiring money to and to, to sell and buy and sell art and whatnot. So uh, that would be a, a thing. Um, so they're there, and they are all um, you know they they look at the. The gold, they look at the insignia, they start discussing among each other, and after a while, a good, good little while, right? You have basically you have an impromptu meeting of almost some of the most important guilds in the city, right? Called by by the uh, by the steward himself, who speaks with the voice of the guild uh, of the uh, the Lord Mayor, right? And it's like, and even you see that some spells are even cast. Um, does he detect magic or whatnot? He says fake, perhaps. It's like, and the main me member of the Sage Guild is like, it might take some further study, but I do believe that at the very least this is a genuine gold bar, and by my estimation, it did come from the South. However, whoever is uh, smuggling this gold into the city to finance their operations, they might be altering it in some way, perhaps re recasting into coins and the like uh, because we have not seen these you know, in circulation. And, you know, that's another uh, that yes, that's fine. Because especially the uh, the money lenders will be the ones that people come with. The jewelers are the ones who uh, usually convert stuff to gems, right? Because especially uh, adventurers love to carry their wealth in gems. So that's one of part of their part of the banking. The, there's no actual bank 
Uh, the closest that comes to a bank is one of the the deities, and that's no no Noribo. Uh, let's see if it's Noribo. I'm not making you know. Greyhawk. I'm not making this up. Uh, no, it's not. I'm sure, nobody would notice. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Noribo is the uh, god, the sewer god of luck, gambling, and risk. Uh, but it's not him. Oh, is it? Um, are you talking about the the one that we jazz has an on-off relationship with? I believe Silchus. Uh, Silchus, god of wealth, is a uh, husband of Sotilian, goddess of summer, and brother of Kareel, god of theft. Uh, so he is a member of the Oridian pa- uh, pantheon, uh, and um, and he's he, uh, his church is the closest to having an official bank because mm-hmm. most of their temples, uh, in fact, most of these guilds, many of their members, if not, they're not clerics of Silchus, uh, uh, do, you know, to donate to him. Yeah. And and in Greyhawk, ironically enough, it's not a big deity. Uh, Silchus is a very powerful deity, usually to the east, in the former Great Kingdom. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, they do have a temple here and the temple has a vault. So it's the closest thing to what we call a typical bank, right? Mm-hmm. So if you really need to store things of great value, you would go to that to the church of Silchus. Yeah, and otherwise the the aristocracy either have like their own personal safes, or in this case, like the government probably has like a vault somewhere in their keep or something to like. And of course, they just hire out the guilds to do the minting. Exactly. So banking and economy is spread out across multiple <clears throat> guilds, uh, and and that's why they were all brought together. Uh, basically, all of them said that the, if if somebody was simply just dumping the gold, because one of the things, and, and they explained to you that one of the dangers of dumping a lot of gold or silver into the economy is that, you know, inflation, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, even though Greyhawk is the trading center across the finance, it's a jewel of finance, if you start dumping a lot of gold, and not like the way adventurers do, that they dump like 100 or 1,000 gold pieces, we're talking about massive amounts of gold, actually in gold bars, they would have noticed. So mm-hmm. what they suspect is that this gold is being converted into coins, perhaps, you know, uh, in in similar to uh, either not necessarily in gold, in uh, emblazoned with the symbol of Greyhawk. Uh, that's the 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 money the 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 money lenders, and they tell you what tends to happen is that they may use coinage from around the near dive from near near kingdoms and cities, print that coinage or similar to it, the counterfeit mm-hmm. in their gold. And then when they go to pay, because people accept gold as is, it enters into the economy and it just becomes part of the, the exchange, right? Right. Uh, even though even though of course uh, Greyhawk prints his own money. Um uh, and eventually that gets converted into, you know, gets melted down again. And the one thing about gold is it, you know, it's not indestructible. Uh, and so it can be always melted down with very little loss of 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 um quality, of value, quality yeah. and value due to uh its mm-hmm. its weight and can be melted down into um rare hot coins. But people dealing directly with bricks like this, you know, but uh it's very rare. Right. This is more or less a means for simply tr- uh moving the gold somewhere else. Yeah, this is, it could be used, they suspect that it's being used uh, to finance whatever they're financing, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not being used uh, to open uh, open economic warfare, right? Yeah. So, so whoever is in the receiving end of this gold, you know. They're, yeah, they're using they're it to pay their saboteurs and their cults and the like. Exactly. That they could try economic warfare and <laughs> that would be funny. Hey, everybody, who wants to go on complex economic transactions in d It's It's harder, ironically, it's harder to pull off because A, people will just accept whatever coin is here, right? So even though there is an official coin, if it's, you know, unless it's clearly magical or cursed or something like that, uh, it's, the system is not as complex. The thing is that economic warfare usually works when you have a very a, a unitary system of coinage and banking, where this is the system is 
fractured. Mm -hmm. And so you might affect an aspect of it, but not necessarily the whole of it, right? Uh, it would take a very coordinated way to just attack all the, the pieces together uh, in an effective way. Other than just flooding the market with gold, then the problem is that Greyhawk being Greyhawk, you would need a lot of gold to just drive up mm -hmm. the, the inflation, you know? Right. Like eventually, the city might have spikes, but regular expenditure and taxation and, and just regular use would eventually sort of consume the gold and, and actually would spurn growth and rebuilding and all that kind of thing. And, you know, the city would just be better for it, right? That would be, it would back, it would boomer, it would backfire. It's like, oh, we're going to drive your inflation up. It's like, yeah, if this was Podog building number five, sure. But this is a built up to the point. That, Tens of thousands of people and the, basically the richest city in the, in, in, in the nation. We'll destroy yeah. Middle Greyhawk and all the farmer markets, and then it will yeah. collapse. Finally. Yeah, no. Um... <laughs> its economic yeah. structure is built up to the point where and there, there may be some stress and in increase in jobs. Yeah. Because but the more critical more part. Yeah, the more critical part is it, on investigating that this is, in fact, genuine and this is how they're probably doing it hitting the supply lines would probably make the most sense and second would be hitting the mines themselves if anything could get that deep into enemy territory which mm, i don't have some a lot of information on that right now myself like as a player but the going forward here would just be saying if we could hit those supply lines if we could have the funding to increase some military I think it could be possible alongside some scouting or additional investigation to find the targets in the first place. We could do some of that, but any expeditions into what are waters controlled by the Scarlet Brotherhood would be expensive. So we would need to have a well thought out plan. And we we'll also have a particular reason other than people are trading gold in our streets. Oh, this is our concern, and I, I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Uh, we will keep an eye on this. Uh, but yes. well, we'll better see. to be aware than taken off guard. Exactly. Just a moment. Okay. And if you accept this gold bar on the table, maybe you could just accept Marcus back as a noble and ruler of the city. Let, let's not <laughs> sweet. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't bribe the guy. We need him on our side. Unless if he unless if that's how you get him on your side. You don't know that. I, I imagine it being literally like offering up a penny to the, like these people at this table. It's like, yeah, you're the wealthiest people. What if I gave you like three dollars? What'd you do? What's George Washington have to say about this? <laughs> yeah. How about my friend but, uh, Benjamin Franklin? See, like that simulation, this game is not. That Both. would not work. That would not work up here in Canada because we'd be like, "What does this? What's this duck got got to say about that right there? Yeah, that couple saying. bucks. What's that duck got for you? I don't know anything about your monopoly money. Oh no. I'm not even talking about the monopoly money because I do agree our new money our new money looks awful. I, I I don't like it, but like for anything that's one dollar or two dollars, it's a coin. So like you'd literally be like, "How's this coin looking for that?" Huh? Right there. They've the coins. Are, they've already shown that coins are kind of impractical for a lot of things. I don't know why we still use them. You can make swords out of them. You could. That's true. That's big in China, way back when. Really? Yeah, yeah the the coin sword. So you're talking. Like, you're talking about the uh, the way they use their tails. What? Silver silver tails. They were. Oh, that's, okay. Uh, Let's say use their tails. Are were you talking about J Claw, or are you, did you actually think Chinese people have tails? No. <laughs> well, Rob, continue. Continue. <laughs> I don't think I can. <laughs> I must. I must admit, though, uh, I apologize. I'm being so quiet while we're playing. I'm actually grading my students' papers right now. Grading. It's on Discord. Ask them to roll a d20, day. and they add that to their grade. I already caught two people plagiarizing. So. Oh, good. Ooh, yikes. <laughs> my apologies. One of them plagiarized oh, by. Uh, by uh, 
uh, I probably shouldn't say this out loud. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I'll do it off channel. Yeah, that the the coin swords. Yes. Maybe don't put your students on blast live on Twitch. You know. To be fair, I did not say names. <laughs> Jeffrey, in particular, you know who you are. <laughs> to be John fair, I did not from I, TSU. <laughs> I will never say the names of any of my students nor their genders. But I will. Jeffrey, who lives at five two seven zero. Oh boy, I got. All right, I'll tell you an old story real quick. I'm sorry, to, uh, but uh, <laughs> so I had a student submit a homework assignment that was supposed to be uh, like a maybe like a two page essay, so like five paragraphs. They sent me a JPEG picture from their phone, three sentences written, uh, and I'm not joking about that. It was a literal JPEG picture that they took as a screenshot of their phone sending me the essay. Asking, hey, this is okay, right, for an essay. I told them, no, can you please rewrite it, because you still got time to rewrite it. They never showed up to class again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would say their loss, but school probably wasn't for them if that's what they thought would be okay. Yeah. yeah. I have no comments. That is still one of the funniest things I've ever seen. That and one student who we were talking about, like, late antiquity, Rome, and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. they drew the signs of the cross as part of their essay. Hmm. Interesting. I've had a... Welcome to America's education system. Run by Rob. No, no! I'm the one that's marking it wrong! Alrighty then. So, so go uh, to the table, back. slide it on over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they do return to you because it's your gold yeah, yeah. Sir, uh, that'll be $20. How about I don't give you anything and I bribe you with this $20 bill? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they, they, they probably said that um, after everybody leaves, and this takes quite a while, uh, after everybody leaves, um, it says, now, if you're looking for further uh, investments for your project down south, uh, I might have a list of names that perhaps might help you. As for Mr. Olivander, uh, if you can return here tomorrow, I might what? already have this. Um, I'll send in a runner to fetch you. Um, how did you're staying where exactly? I believe it was the sleeping giant we were we were staying. Ah, uh, yes. yes, that's right. I uh, I am uh, I know the place. Um, my reputation. Um, I will send anyone to fetch you, and uh, we should clear this out. Of course, it will take. It will start a very long process, but of course, hopefully, we can clear this out uh, uh, as soon as possible. I want to do an so, insight check on this guy real hard. Go ahead. I want to see if he's just not looking forward to this long process or if there's something behind it. Go ahead. Only 13. Don't I don't have inspiration. He, he you get the feeling that he sees this as a uh, necessary evil. Like, yeah, this is part of the job, but he's cool, cool. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not his thing, right? He has he has better things to do than to deal with. Someone who just claims to have been of a missing family, you know, I've heard that story before, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and I throw people can be brought literally back from the dead, so that's not a unusual, and it's not at his level anyway. Uh, so as you are returning, you realize that there's uh, one of the things about uh, Greyhawk is you always have markets, even into the into into the early evening. So yes. Oh no, we're about to be mugged. So you are traveling. You put yourselves somewhere around here. Yeah, don't let the You're cartels see you. Uh, travel. You're traveling north to the. Okay. Uh, and you see that, that there's there's plenty of light here, right? Uh, you know, people are hawking their last wares before they close. Uh, it's winter, so um, they stay relatively late into the night. So as you're moving. Forward. Let me see. I'm gonna make this full. 
I probably see them. I think given the context of being in Greyhawk and assuming that there's no danger and having peacebound weapons, my AC is probably 11. <laughs> well, I mean, you your armor. All of my all of my AC is armor. <laughs> and I have minus 1 dex. I mean, the, he's oh, implying oh, that he's not armor. wearing his armor. Correct. Oh. I went and had a pleasant noble meeting. I didn't walk in there wearing plate mail. Because I don't own you're it. Right. <laughs> don't yeah. worry. I, don't worry. I got your back. Hmm. Well, how like, long I'm, until you get plate mail? By the way, you get stabbed in the front, though. Unfortunately. Uh currently I am at do 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 forty four weeks. It's on the calendar. Is it forty four weeks? I thought it was ninety days. I can't remember. <laughs> I don't think it was ever 90 days. If it was, oh man, I'd have that ages ago. No, no, no. I mean from. You're 90 days from. Hold oh, on. Oh, I'm, I'm counting from the original. It is, I have waited 44 weeks. Well, how long do you have left? I would assume 52. Uh, they had just said 90 days. We'll uh, no, it's that. not 90. Yeah, hold on. Okay. Uh, your plate mail finishes on cold even the 9th, which is a rainy day, by the way. How many days away is that? Hold on. We're on the bottom of the, the year calendar right now, so I have to scroll up and down real quick. Because <laughs> we are Sunseb the 21st, which is basically December 21st, if you want to think of it that way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you don't see what's happening. So you are somewhere around here. Uh, that, that matches my passive perception. No, it doesn't. The 26? No, it doesn't. 12 okay. weeks. 12 weeks 26, 26 is the base. Yeah, oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I take that back. Yeah. So as you're going through there, I mean, you're going to see what happens because, you know, hmm. what's your armor class? Um, Uh, if it's Marcus, 13. No, uh, Kix, what's your armor class right now? Assuming I'm not actively holding a shield, oh. 9. I was up there with, with everybody. <laughs> 9? 9! Nine. I have armor. minus 1 dexterity, and I'm wearing nothing. I'm still wearing my armor, so I got 17. You don't wear You're armor. Monk. You don't... <laughs> <laughs> Same here. You specifically don't wear armor. You know, that's it. I know. I'm, it's, I, yeah. I, I always get your lail wearing at least a leather strap. That's about it. Okay, so this is the total amount of damage you're going to get. Uh, yeah, I got some problem. armor. These gains! Uh, so, that's 13 <laughs> points. And then... Uh, so, 43 hit points. As a as a first shot hits you in the back, uh, also roll a DC sixteen Constitution check. Constitution check. Let's go. Failure. You are paralyzed, and here comes the second shot. Oh no! It's a regular shot. It's also a hit. And it's two, five. Yeah, and heavy armor master does not apply. So your True. total damage is thirty-two hit points. As that happens, and by the way, you do notice this. Uh, you don't notice the bolts, but you do notice something wrong with several uh, of the, uh, shall we say, uh, of containers. There's barrels. And, and and Marcus, they just smell wrong to you. You you used to like brine, and there's something wrong with them. So you're not you are not going to be surprised with this. Anybody who has uh, passive perception of 50, uh, 15 or higher will not be surprised with this. Uh, but everyone Whoops. else will be. Whoops. Uh, so so yeah, two shots. Oh, they hit. Um, hits in the back, and he's paralyzed. Mm hmm. And uh, initiative for everyone else. So let's uh, 
Thank God that spell has range. Yeah. Thank should God. I roll initiative lessons? Everybody should. Okay. Because it's important. Uh, uh, you can make a saving throw at the end of your initiative to see if you snap out of the... Uh, Come on, guys. I just had a whole argument about how necromancers weren't evil. <laughs> well... It ain't looking too good for you. They're not zombies. They're just covered in acne. It's 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 a skin Look, condition. guys, the 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 boss around here is a real slave driver. Sometimes you just feel like a zombie. <laughs> you just um, one of these. Did, did I see the uh, the individual that shot as well? Uh, no. So them shooting were... didn't didn't reveal themselves. Well, they did. You you can see where. The shots are, and it's about 60 feet away, one of the rooftops, and already the person was running and jumping at him. So you saw you saw a figure jump out of a jump from a rooftop into the building, so you lost sight of him when he jumped to the street. Cool, cool. Point to the rooftop, I'll start going after I him. do. I do, I do. Uh, and, you know, the barrel shatter, and zombies come in, and, and people start... And this is the thing. Remember, this is a day, uh, night market. People are, are closing in and doing their final shopping. People start running everywhere and, sh and screaming and shouting. Uh, so the zom the zombos. Uh, let me clear this. You have to imagine, though, this is what every Greyhawk citizen want waits for. Because the moment a fight breaks out in the uh, street, anything you're holding in your hands is free. Not paying for this! God, zombie attack. Half price. Uh <laughs> So yeah, Leo, uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, the legitimately does uh, Marcus yep. actually point out where the 100%. rooftop was? Uh, yep. Where? So what rooftop was it? Somewhere around here. I don't see the uh, the ping. Bottom okay, left. Bottom left. Yeah. Bottom left. Oh, over there. Yeah, yeah. that's where he was banging. But they, uh, you know, let's see. I want to see what their uh, initiative is. That's very important. I assume you did it secretly. Yes. Again. So Marcus and Leo go first. All right. Well, I'm not bound by the laws of physics, so... True. But and you are have you have to uh dodge everybody that's running and, and all the things in between. So yeah, you're mm -hmm. it, the first movement is gonna be at half move. Ah, you sneaky. Uh, until you clear those streets. Uh okay then. Uh how dark are the streets? Uh they're in shadow. You can see them in their shadow. That's all I needed. Um yeah. Boom, ba doom. Did I just go and check something real quick? Half move doesn't exist for the shadows. Are those uh, zombies actually right next to him, though? Yeah. I'll take the hit. I don't care. Teleportation yeah. doesn't. Teleportation Th doesn't. Is that what yeah. he's doing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's Sorry, the plan, my mind focused entirely on physics don't apply to me. I'm like, yes, they do. So I can teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space and can see that I can see that is also in dim light or darkness, so long as I'm within shadows of some, uh, if within a shadow. So, yeah, I'm thinking, like, we'll literally go on top of the rooftop over here. Okay. It would be, like, on top of the rooftop here. Uh, do I see, like, either of the assassins? Do you see the assassin here? In fact, oh. you see, uh, yeah, he has a bow in his hand. He took two uh, shots, and then you teleported because you know you beat him in the initiative. Uh, so yeah, but you didn't see actually, that. No, actually, you know, actually, how does it work? Yeah, what what's your passive perception? It's only twelve, unfortunately. Yeah, okay, you don't react until everybody else who, uh, so you don't get to react to this round. Ah, damn. All right. Yeah, that's the thing. Marcus does, but you don't. All right, I'll go back. Yeah. <laughs> and I, Sorry about I that. don't and I don't see their position on the rooftop, correct? No, you see where the the arrows came 
from. Sure. But, you know, okay. And you see, you saw something, you know, like a shadow there because you're very perspective, perspective. Yeah. Maybe silhouetted against the sky, but that's about it. Yeah. So, yeah. If I would have seen their, seen where they are on the rooftop, I could do something. But because I can't see where they are on there, I cannot. However, uh, I will go to here. Actually, I'm going to go here to draw. Yeah, I'm going to go here to draw the attention of the two undead there. First step one, tentacle. On the opposite side of kicks. Step two, my eye glows blue. Energy shimmers down. And I will cast Armor of Agathis. And I have to do it at a fifth level. Okay. Which means I have 25 temporary hit points. And whenever I am uh, hit by a melee attack while I have those temporary hit points, whatever hits me takes 5 cold damage. Oh! No, correction, they take 25 cold damage because it goes up by 5 for every level. 